Here we have a second example of an impulse problem. Here we're going to have a ball hit by a bat. I think that's a baseball bat. Let's find out. For being hit by a bat, a baseball had a speed of 40 meters per second. After being hit, its speed was 60 meters per second. If the bat was in contact with the ball for three milliseconds, then find the average force exerted by the bat on the ball Assume the mass of the ball is 143 grams. And with apologies, I'm not redrawing the picture for this little video. Have a before and an after, or a time initial and a time final. And on the left, we have the bat, the ball coming in. This points out that gravity is acting on the ball as it's approaching. However, the gravitational force is very small compared to the force from the bat on the ball. So here's the large force from the bat. That impulse force is going to outweigh any other forces so that approximately the net force on the ball is just going to be the force from the bat. This also shows the initial speed is 40 meters per second, but as a component over here, we're showing that to the right is the positive direction the way I've drawn the picture. As a component, this velocity is going to be negative 40 meters per second. And in the after, well, the bat has now hit the ball. The ball is sailing off to the right at 60 meters per second. The final speed is 60 meters per second. The final velocity component is also 60, positive 60 meters per second. Let's get a little math going with this. And let the mass of the ball, 143 grams, probably rather that be 0.143 kilograms. The velocity, initial x component, negative 40 meters per second. Final velocity, positive 60 meters per second. Now, let's pull up impulse. Impulse is two different things. It's the net force times the elapsed time. And that's, in some sense, really the significance of impulse. It tells what happens when a force acts over a period of time. But then this also equals the change in the momentum. And I think both aspects are going to show up in this problem. The motion is in the x, so let's take the vector equation, look at the x components here. Losing the impulse i symbol itself, just focusing on the net force times the elapsed time, times the change in the momentum. But the net force is approximately the same as the impulse force, which uh, means that that approximate net force, the impulse force times the elapsed time, is going to equal the change in the momentum. The impulse force is approximately the force from the bat times the elapsed time. Now, just writing out the change in momentum, momentum is mass times velocity, so the change is mass times the final velocity minus the mass times the initial velocity. But if you prefer, you can factor out the m and makes the math a tiny little bit easier. Plugging in the values that we know, the elapsed time is three milliseconds. Probably should have written that down on this slide somewhere, but that's 0 0.003 seconds. It's gonna equal the mass 0.143 times the difference in the velocities. Once again, though, the signs are very significant. So while the uh, change in the velocity here requires a subtraction, the initial velocity is a negative, and subtracting the negative ultimately makes it plus the positive. Um, still, just aiming for the solution, working out the right-hand side, dividing by 0 0.003 should give something about like the force from the bat is approximately 4,767 newtons. I don't know about you, but I'd rather not be hit by the bat personally. And that's a second problem related to impulse.